I don't often do this, or I don't know, maybe I've never done this, but I'd like to put out a podcast to explore an idea and a thought that I've uh, I've had for quite some time, and I've I've never quite been able to figure it out. And so I know other people have probably the same thought or have been trying to figure out what these things mean or what they're trying to tell us. And so I thought maybe by kind of putting this out there, maybe I'm missing something and everybody else already knows but me, and then I'll learn. <laughs> or uh, potentially we could uh, kind of put our heads together based upon the other things we've been talking about on my prior 33 podcasts on avoidthemark.com slash podcast and maybe see how it all ties in together or doesn't. Maybe it doesn't tie in at all. We all know, I would think most of us know, the story of The Truman Show starring Jim Carrey. And that was put out, that was put out a little bit before the whole reality show thing became a thing like around the year 2000 you know I think I think the Truman Show was 98 something like that sounds right Um, I never look these things up I just kind of as I always say I'm just spitballing when I press record I spitball (laughs) and and what I find is a lot of times in these podcasts even uh, in these podcasts I find that as I talk things through that I've been banging around up in my head and that I've been praying about and seeking God about as I just talk them through out loud, I myself learn things. And the crazy thing is about these podcasts, sometimes I'll go back and listen after I'm done and I'll learn <laughs> from from the words coming out of my own mouth because as I keep saying, I, I'm just an empty vessel uh, for my creator to, to speak what, what he wants to say to however many people he wants to hear it. That's just my job right now. I'm sure it'll change in the future, but it's my job right now. And so I find, like I said, just talking these things through a lot of times helps me figure things out. And that's why I said the other day, did you ever think maybe this is just like talk therapy for me? <laughs> you know, because a lot of it is. I don't know how my words affect this person or that person, or if, if you know, 60 people are listening or 6 million people are listening. The numbers that the YouTube and Twitter and social media show for views and all that anymore are, are, have nothing to do with views and all that, and they have nothing to do with it, with it at all. It's just, this is garbage numbers that they put out there to make you feel irrelevant. But I know there's a lot more people that listen. I know for sure, based upon feedback. But um, so the Truman Show back in '98, as I said, I, I believe, um, you know, it depicted a story. This was prior to reality shows becoming a thing depicted a story of a of a baby born you know with no parents and is adopted by a corporation you know in Hollywood and is made into the star of a reality show where he's the center of the reality show and everybody else in his world is an actor or an actress every single person they're in a big dome he's in a big dome and uh, surrounded by water and uh, he never gets out. He never gets off Sea Haven, it's called, I believe. The island of Sea Haven. And, and they convince him through the course of his life that it's the best place on the earth and there's nowhere else you'd want to go. Ever, ever, ever. Sea Haven. And then, of course, they use propaganda and fear tactics to show him he doesn't want to fly. You know, that he's going to get hit by lightning if he flies. And and then his dad dies in a drowning accident when he's a small child. You know, this is all part of a script to make him afraid of water. So he doesn't want to go in water. So he's got a phobia of the water. But he also has an innate desire to explore. And he wants to go to Fiji. You know, he wants to explore the world. You know, and they even I remember a scene with him in childhood in, in elementary school they show where where the teacher just basically, you know, he, he's standing there. What, you know, it's like the day of... The kid's talking about what they want to do for a living when they grow up. And and he stands up, to, you know, and he says, I want to be like Magellan. I want to be an explorer. And then the teacher pulls down the, the flat map, which is a flat map of, of a round earth, which never made, you know, globe earth, which never made any sense to begin with. <laughs> and she points out all the different spots in the world. And she's like, nope, everything's already been discovered. So too bad, you know, that's it. And just crushes his hopes of his dream of being an explorer. And so as he grows up, 
you know, he does all the things that we all do. And he gets a job and, I don't know, he's an accountant or something. I don't remember. Gets married and and all that. And, of course, his wife is an actress. Everybody's an actress. His best friend's an actress or an actor. And uh, and all that. His mom's an actor. His dad, who died, was an actor. And, uh, and so slowly as he gets... In his 30s, it seems to be about the age that he is. I don't know if they ever say in the movie how old uh, the character is. Again, it's, it's played by Jim Carrey. So right off the bat, you know it's a message coming at us because Jim Carrey is, is definitely in the system, and, and they use him to to portray a lot of things to us through art imitating life, imitating art imitating life, that big cycle I always talk about. It's all one and the same thing. That's how they look at it within the system, within their black magic system um as we talked about in episode 33 earlier today if you haven't heard that might be the most important one i've made ever honestly uh going back even to my b system revealed days uh what came out of my mouth i didn't even realize it was episode 33 i didn't even thought thought about it till the very end you'll hear it if you listen to it i'm like oh this is 33 this one's probably important as i re-listened to it uh, yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's very important to listen to that whole thing all the way to the end until you get to t- where I'm talking about frequency and things like that. It's just so important. Important things to start understanding um, in our lives. So yeah, Jim Carrey, is, you, they always use him <laughs> to send messages to us. But I think it wouldn't be out of the question to think his age in, in, that, in the Truman Show is about 33, right? That's about kind of the age that he seems to be and he so he starts understanding what the world actually is he starts noticing patterns and noticing things that that don't make sense like he's starting to you know, starting to feel like something suspicious here it's just the world isn't what i thought and, and and i remember at one point there's one scene where he's sitting in he he's sitting in his car in his driveway and he's watching the same cycle of of you know a girl goes by on a bike and then you know, a yellow car goes by or you know, all the same time, you know, he, he's timing it because it's just, a, he's like, this is all just a game. It's all just a cycle. He's watching it. And then he gets his wife out there and he's like, hey, you got to see this. So he sits her down and she's like, no, you're crazy. You're crazy. You're crazy. Because, of course, she's an actress and she knows that it's all a stage, right? His whole world is a stage and all the players are merely actors. And, uh, and so, so he says, okay, now watch right here going to be a girl on a bike with flowers or something like that and then right here there's going to be a yellow car or a yellow taxi or something she's like ah, nah, 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 you know you're full of it you're just imagining things and it's like all the things everybody always says to you whenever you come to them with a conspiracy right you come to them with facts and you're like i know exactly what's going on here and you can't tell me otherwise because i'm taking it in with my own senses and then they always tell you yeah you just have to make conspiracy theories they won't even listen to you yeah, oh, I, I always kidded with my my recent ex, you know, when I it sometimes feels like just this weirdest things happen to me. It's like, geez, that seemed really scripted, you know, and she'll always be like, what are you talking about? Is this coincidence? What I'm like, are you in on it? Are you in on it? I'd always say that to her in a half joking way. You know what I mean? Like it, it, but at the same time, <laughs> it's just, you know, I would always joke about the Truman Show with her because it just seemed like that so often that uh, it's just goofy things. It's just goofy things that that don't seem to, uh, <laughs> you know. And I, I'm not saying that's reality at all. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying you look at the parallel. If you understand the world for what it actually is and you understand, you know, all the things that I've talked about in these podcasts and all the way back in B-System Reveal Channel, if you're brand new to here, uh, there's a lot to, to, to dig into, I guess, and I can't repeat all in one video uh, to, to get you there <laughs> to, to what I'm talking about. But, but you really understand what the world actually is and where we live, what we live in, in and on. Um, you know, the Truman Show is a perfect parallel. And, and they, they tell us, well, this is it. This is, this is it. This is all the land. These are your continents. And there's seven of them. And, and it's, it's a flat earth map the UN shows us. The UN shows us the true flat earth map and the United Nations logo is the flat earth map. And they say it's, it's, you know, seven continents and it's separated into exactly 33 quadrants on the UN logo. And, uh, and that's it. That's it. And then, you, but really you're just a big ball flowing through, flying through nothing, 
flying through a vacuum, your big ball flying through a vacuum at astronomical speeds that you can never feel. Yeah. That's what they tell you. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really crazy how they do that, but, but they've convinced us of it, just like in the Truman Show. For, for 33 years, he was convinced that that, that, that was it, and, and uh, there was nothing else. So finally, he gets smart. And he doesn't let anybody tell him no anymore. He just refuses to let anybody tell him no. And uh, and he goes for it. You know, he gets his wife in the car or whatever at first and just goes for it. And, you know, and everything's trying to stop him. All of a sudden, they fake a forest fire after he gets over a bridge. He was terrified to go over the bridge even, over the bridge, over the water. It's like a phobia, you know. God, I had a phobia fall on me. I've never talked about this. I should talk about this. I had a phobia fall on me. It was crazy. It was uh, December 21st of 2012. And it was the same day that I noticed that the sun had changed. I talked about that in a recent video. The same day I noticed the sun had changed. It's also my birthday, December 21st. I was born in 1976. On Twitter it says 77. I'm just being all sneaky. No, I think I was just a typo. So, but I was born in 76. Actually, I don't even know if it publicly says that on Twitter. I'm not sure. It just always says. But so anyway, on, on December 21st of uh, 2012, so nine years ago, Plus, I was driving uh, on the highway, <clears throat> and uh, it was, again, about phobias and, and how Jim Carrey had this phobia of the water. He was conditioned to have this phobia of the water, but phobias are and how they hold us back from things. So I've never really had a phobia. I was always kind of scared of spiders, and they creeped me out. I had a little bit of a phobia feeling once in a while if I'd see, like, a really big one moving really fast, you know? I think that's kind of normal, but this was different. So my whole life, I loved driving. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Loved road trips. Um, I was the guy that, you know, I lived in Orlando for a while and, and things like that. And, 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 and so I, I would drive back and forth 24 hours straight, 24 hours straight by myself without stopping, without stopping for the night. It's like, whatever, you know, caffeine and go for it. And I was always fine, you know, until I'd get to like Northern Illinois. If I'm coming from Orlando, I'd get to like Northern Illinois and no, I've still got, you know, four hours to go. And I'm like, oh, this is Mountain Dew. Back then, back in the back in the mid-90s, mid to late 90s, you didn't have Red Bull and stuff like that. You said Mountain Dew. You know, like, this Mountain Dew and this coffee ain't getting it done nowhere. But, so I love driving. I always love driving. I loved road trips. And one day I picked up everything. And out of, out of nowhere, one one or two phone conversations, I picked up my whole life and said, I'm going to Houston, you know, middle of the afternoon. Drove to Houston. <laughs> Yeah, straight through 20, 26, 28 hours or something. So obviously driving has never been an issue for me ever in my life. Well, uh, December 21st, 2012, I was driving. I was, I was going to go. I, I've always last minute Christmas shops for my son when he was younger. He was young at the time, like six, five. And so I was going Christmas shopping, you know, Santa shopping, whatever. And then I always wrap his presents on Christmas Eve night once he went to bed. It just kind of became my tradition once... Once we were, you know, me and me and his mom were divorced, and, and I, you know, I would have him those on those Christmases I had him. This is what I did, because um, I like to delay, <laughs> I like to take my time and wait to the last minute. So anyway, I'm driving, and I'm I'm getting close to my destination, which was Target. Uh, my Target was Target, and I'm driving past this one specific place. I know for certain I could still I could show you exactly where I was and when it happened. And as I drove, uh, all of a sudden something hit me right in the brain. Something just zapped me. That's the only way I can describe it. And immediately I was totally discombobulated, had no idea what I was doing. I was terrified. I was at 70 miles an hour on the highway and I reached for my, my uh, you know, gear shifter or whatever. And I almost put my car in, or my vehicle in park at 70 miles an hour. I was that immediately shaken by something. I don't know what. I still to this day, I don't know what. What happened there? But was there some frequency? I, I don't know. I mean, it was right near like a big old cell tower. Um, you know, that would have been, I guess, back in 3G days, but <clears throat> maybe 4G, maybe early 4G. I don't remember, but so I got hit by something. And from that day on, uh, I could never drive right again. I couldn't drive again. Uh, I remember I got to, t I eventually regathered myself and got to Target and did my shopping, but I was, I was driving home, trying to get home. It was about, you know, 40 minute drive on the highway. And I was losing my mind, losing my mind. I was going to die any second. All of a sudden, all, the, all those things I was noticing about driving that always were really, really dangerous, that always are extremely dangerous all the time. It's amazing we don't always die every day the way we drive and the really slow people in this world. Like, geez. But all of a sudden, I was noticing every detail of all of that, and I couldn't stop it. 
that I felt out of control, like I was just going to involuntarily drive off the road at any moment. I really did. It, it was So I was like, I got to get home, you know. And so the only thing I could do is like call somebody and try to talk me down and talk me through this. Like, who am I going to talk to about this? The only thing I, the only person I could think of was, well, hope my mom is home, you know. And, and plus, they lived kind of in between where I lived at the time. And so I thought, well, maybe I could stop there and get my bearings and move on from there. And uh, so I, I get on the phone with her and she's like, what is wrong with you, you know. I like, you on drugs? I'm like, no. Uh, she was really concerned because I was so, I was so like, what happened? This doesn't make sense, you know. And I was under a lot of stress at the time. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't like my life was all peachy keen and, and glorious. I was under a lot of stress, a lot of stress. So, I don't know, something broke. But anyway, so I, she, I finally said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. And, uh, you just got to get me home and I'll, we'll talk about when I get there. And so she talked to me. And then when I got back into town where I lived and, wasn't on the highway anymore, then I was kind of okay. Because it was like, well, even if I get in an accident going this speed, um, you know, I won't die. It'll just kind of <laughs> damage my vehicle. And so that's the way all of a sudden my brain was working. And it was funny because the other day I was I was in a car as a passenger because I can't, I still can't to this day. Nine years later, I have the same phobia. It's gotten worse. It's gotten worse progressively. Um, I don't know why. I know it's totally illogical, but at the same time, it's not because, you know, I'm on a highway in a, in a, in a heavily populated area, which I haven't been in a while, you know, multi-lane highway, stuff like that. And I'm watching all these people bob and weave and just bumper to bumper, 75 miles an hour, 80 miles. I'm like, geez, man, like, how do we survive this? There's like some sort of invisible force that directs it, I swear, because we were never meant to move at those speeds and those types of contraptions that they are just stuck together like race cars. And, and it, you know, there was one incident actually yesterday, man, that almost got ugly. Some guy come up and he he literally just was trying to like like a like on NASCAR with it like the bump and rub, you know he comes up on somebody to to the right to, to the left in front of us like two vehicles and literally comes up on him tries to spin him out almost and the guy like darts over I'm like jeez like we'd have been in that one that would have spread out across the whole whole highway and welcome huge pile up like jeez and then there were two other weird situations like that and I said to the person driving I'm like welcome to my world she's like this is all weird <laughs> and then, this is all weird <laughs> like, what's going on <laughs> stuff doesn't happen to me I'm like well it's welcome to my world like this is how it goes but so there's something with driving I don't understand the phobia I've watched every YouTube video on it I can find about over, how to overcome it things like that and they don't work at all uh, you know, I've toughed it out at times, but, but man, it's gotten hard to even tough it out. It's like one thing that really holds me back and I don't know where it came from. And I don't know why it's just there, but it's like in the movie. It's, it's like in the Truman show where he has this horrible phobia of, of water. It's equal. It's nonsensical, but you can't overcome it. Well, so finally he does. Finally he does. You know, he gets in his car and his wife and he just heads over that bridge and Next thing you know, they're setting off fake forest fires. They're trying to keep them going. He's like, screw this. And just, you know. So eventually, I don't remember. I haven't seen the movie in so long. I'm surprised I'm remembering all these details because I was going to just kind of talk about it at a high level. But all these things seem to be important, you know, as the parallel of our lives with the Truman Show. And I'm trying to figure out. And then we'll talk about Bandersnatch. Man, it's going to get to be a long video. But um, So he ends up finally overcoming his, his phobia. And decides he's setting sail, you know. He he starts playing. He starts playing the game. Now he knows the game. He knows he's being watched all the time. He knows uh, that it's all one big show. And he knows he can. He wants. He wants to see what's what else is out there. He doesn't know he's in a dome yet. He doesn't know anything about that. He just knows he's ready to sail. He's ready to fly. You know, <laughs> he's ready to ride on out of there because it's all one big thing, and and it's not for him anymore. And so he gets on a boat and goes sailing off, and and. Uh, Finally hits the end. Finally hits the dome. Hits the dome. There's no farther to go. And it's right by a staircase to a door. And right then, God, God speaks to him. And it's it's it's, it's a producer, Kristoff, up in up in the moon, I believe it was. Up in the moon was where the, the producers were that were controlling all of everything. And, uh, and so Kristoff comes on. And it's the voice of God to, to, to Jim Carrey's character, you know. And he, and he tries to tell him, you know, you don't have to leave. Everything in here is better than what you're going to find out there. And and uh, he's like, no, nah, you know, he kind of entertains it for a second just to put on the last of the show. And he walks up the stairs and takes a bow and opens the door. And, and that's it. That's the end. No, who, he had no idea what's outside that door. He had no idea. 
No idea in the world what he was going to find. It was also a woman he fell in love with. It was a woman he fell in love with when he was, you know, one point in, in the storyline before he met his wife. And and this woman was, was like an extra. She got a job, but she got in because she got in as an extra because she wanted to tell him what was actually going on. And she really was trying to tell him and uh, that he was the actor and the whole thing was a show. But, but uh you know, she didn't get the chance to because the producers kept stopping it. But she never left his mind. And I remember at one point he was taking magazines and was cutting out, you know, different images of, of, of different women's from women's magazines to try to recreate her face so he so he wouldn't forget it. These are all important details of, of what they're trying to show us from from that movie, you know, before reality television became a thing. They were showing us reality television. And then showing us you know, the, the whole world is reality television. And so what I think, what I think is, and, and this is as deep as I've gotten with it, and it's hard for me to explain, and maybe talking through it right here will help. I think it's a parallel of reality. And I think if you look at what reality actually is, every single one of us lives completely independent of each other. Our own realities in our own minds, in our own experiences, and the things we look at, it's absolutely infinitesimally impossible for two people to experience the same exact reality ever, 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 or even sense the same reality. And, and coronavirus has showed us that, how people can see the same exact things and they experience two completely opposite realities. Well, we're all doing that all the time. Even if you spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week glued at the hip, even if you're, I don't know, conjoined twins, I guess they call them now. I don't want to get this flagged, but... Even if you're conjoined twins, you're still not experiencing the same reality. You're still independent. Your thoughts and the way you take things in and how they apply to to everything else. And so we are all, and, and, and it was Shakespeare that said that, you know, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are, you know, are merely players, are merely actors. All the players are actors. And I'm not saying everybody, I'm not saying that at all. Like, that's a dangerous slope if you go down that and say, well, everybody else is an actor and I'm in the Truman Show. I'm not saying that. I'm saying it's symbolic. It's showing us something. And I think what is really, I think maybe what is really showing us is, is showing us how we are all independent and how we've all been put into a box, into a cage, into a reality that we can break out of. More so than, than than you and I even realize. Even more so than people like me and you think, right? If me and you are on the same page with a lot of things, that we still haven't broken out. Like we're still, we're still, we're still Jim Carrey at a certain point in that movie. Like I still can't cross the bridge. I still have this phobia thing, right? I still can't cross the bridge to even find out, even escape it yet. I, I, I'm at the point of just understanding it fully, like when he fully understands it is when he says, nothing's going to stop me now. I have to overcome everything. And so I haven't fully understood it yet, not even close. He, he fully understood where he was. He didn't fully understand what was on the outside. He didn't have a clue. He just knew there was something. And that's kind of the symbolism I see in it. I mean, you don't know what I'm looking at right now, and I don't know what you're looking at. So boom, our realities are completely different in real time, in the moment. Really think about that. Even your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your dog, you know, it's glued to you at the hip. Their reality is completely thinking about completely different things. I think about my relationship with my recent ex. You know, we spend most of our time together, almost the vast majority of our time together, but we were always thinking about very different things, always on, on different pages. So although we're in the same environment, our realities were not the same at all. And I'd say something and she took it different because she took it different in her reality. And she say something to me and I take it different in my reality. You know, and then I would always say, well, you just never want to talk about anything that means anything. And then she'd always say to me, you're just always too sensitive, you know. And it's, so it's, um, that's what I mean by Truman Show, your own reality. And everybody else is kind of an actor in your reality in a certain way. They play into your reality. And see, I think God, what, what Yahweh does, what he, he, he literally is able simultaneously to view all of our realities simultaneously for what they are individually. He, he lives through that. He lives through it. You know, his power, his glory lives through it. Through all of his individual 
realities that, that I'm looking at right now and Yahweh knows I'm looking at constantly. You know, maybe he's the producer. You know, he's the, the almighty producer of the show. But it's not really a show. It's, it's, it's life. It's joy. It's, oh my God, you know, I have the most amazing creator. <laughs> and, you know, and so and then you go to, to, I don't know if you've seen it. It was kind of an obscure movie. If you haven't seen it, try watching it and see what you think. I, you know, I've, I've suggested to a few other people and they're like, oh, that was stupid. But it's called, it's from Black Mirror. And we all know Black Mirror. I think it's still on Netflix, but it's a movie. It's called Bandersnatch. Black movie Bandersnatch. And, you know, it's, 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 about a, it's about a book. It's about a book of like an adventure book, you know, and, and, and this, this, this uh, older uh, teenage kid who's, who's just kind of out of school, if I remember, uh, wants to take this book and, and turn it into a video game. But it, the, the movie's based in like 1982. So it's like those old school kind of video games. But in the movie, in Bandersnatch, um, so you, you as the viewer, you as the viewer uh, of, of the YouTube or of the uh, Netflix video, actually control how the storyline plays out. So certain things will happen, and then it'll make you make a choice. And then when you make a choice as the viewer, it uh, it causes the next scene to play out based upon your choice. And, and so you make kind of different choices as things go along. And, you soon start to figure out, I mean, I want to ruin it, but you soon start to figure out that if the choice wasn't the right one, even though you made it, you were going to have to replay all of that to get back to making that choice again and then make the right one. You had to keep replaying uh, the same reality until you made the right. So it was like all heading to one imminent conclusion, right? And so what it all boils down to, and I only saw it once, so I can't give you a ton of details on it, but... What it all boiled down to is, is finally he's, at his, he's sitting at his, his computer, you know, his little computer monitor, Apple IIe or whatever that he's writing his, he's writing his, his code on for this Bandersnatch adventure game that's really like sucking him in. You know, and, and a lot of cool things happen throughout. But so let's watch it. See if you can find it. See if you get anything out of it. But so what ends up happening is, is something pops up on his computer screen and it basically starts to explain to him eventually that, uh, that he's not in control of his own actions. And that somebody else is making his decisions for him remotely, which, as we learn, is us. It's Netflix, you know, making his decisions remotely. And he hasn't been controlling them, which is why it, it oftentimes in his life he feels out of control of what he does. Like he does things he doesn't even want to do. It's like it's somebody else making somebody else. It's us, the viewer of the Netflix movie, making the decision for him. So it kind of twists your brain. And, you know, because you don't realize this as you're watching the movie. You don't realize it until you get, you know, near the end of the movie, kind of, when you start to, at least I'm always slow on picking up on movies. I'm always slow, you know, like whoever I'm with will be like, oh, I figured that out a half hour ago. Oh, okay. Well, I just did. <laughs> so, so I'm slow with that. I get distracted off. It's hard for me to make it through any movie. In fact, we were just saying the other night, I was just saying to somebody like, there's no movies anymore. There's nothing. There's nothing to watch. Absolutely nothing. It's all garbage. It's all garbage propaganda. It's junk. I guess it always has been, but at least it used to give you some something to look at and figure out. But uh, so when he finds out, <clears throat> he hasn't been making his own decisions at all, and uh, it's been the viewer, and he doesn't even know what Netflix is. He doesn't even know. He's like, "What is Netflix?" You know, it's 1982, 1983. And yada, 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 he ends up finding out that his dad, who was raising him, his mom died when, at a young age based upon a decision that he had made over a teddy bear or something like that. And so he delayed her. To, she missed her train, caught the next one. That train got an accident, killed her, is how it all was told to him. And so, of course, he always harbored that guilt and was going through therapy, talk therapy, going through talk therapy and things like that to try to figure it out. And um, so... <laughs> So it all starts to come to a head, and all of a sudden he's realizing his dad isn't who he thought he was. His dad is somebody else, and uh, his dad's in on it. His dad's like part of the CIA or something, or some 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 three letter something NSA or whatever, you know, Space Force. What the hell is Space Force? Come on, what is Space Force? The Guardians, the Guardians. You know, they they call them like like they call them the Marines, right? Or you know, they call them the Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy. What is this clown world? <laughs> but uh, so, so so he's like he's he thinking all of a sudden his dad's like CIA or NSA and things like that. It turns out he is, you know, and uh, and the whole thing has been like kind of like the Truman Show. It's all been a show. It's 
and he has a man in control of it, and it all was leading to this one point. So what the hell is that? You know, I mean, Black Mirror, the series, showed us a lot of things, a lot of things uh, that are coming, a lot of plans that they have. Obviously, it's like it's spot on. Even, you know, even the, the writer at one point said, well, I can't write any more episodes because everything's happening too fast. Like, hey, I can't, you know, he could have been just pretending to say, you know, but that's what he, that was the quote. Like, I can't keep up with what's going on in the actual world, like to even keep ahead of it with, with Black Mirror episodes. And so, so then they bring us Bandersnatch. And I think it was after that. I think it was after he was quoted as saying that all of a sudden this movie, Black Mirror Bandersnatch comes out and it's, it's about that. You know, it's about a, a, a kid who doesn't actually control. So what is that? You know, that one I don't understand at all, but I understand it means something. I don't know if you have any theories on it, but, you know, it's a Sunday night. Maybe a good night to give it a watch and, and see what you think. Even if you don't necessarily care for the storyline, it gets kind of lame, I guess, at times. But I found it interesting overall. I mean, I watched the whole thing, you know, and I, I purposefully started making, like, wrong decisions that I knew would be wrong. As I went deeper into it, I'm like, okay, they want me to choose, you know. So I would choose one that was wrong just to see what would happen. So I really watched, I think, as many scenes within it as I possibly could have before it eventually uh, led all to the same conclusion, um, as I remember it. So give that a look. But you know, that with, with the Truman Show and the things that that the parallels there with reality and and you know the things that we don't yet understand. Like I said, we're still like Jim Carrey who hasn't crossed the water yet. We just know it. We just understand it now. We see it all. We know everything. No one's going to talk us out of it. You know, like him with his wife. His wife wasn't, he, he, he had already figured out she was an actress too. And again, this is all symbolic, I think. You know, it's all symbolic. I'm not saying your wife's an actress. I mean, come on, don't, don't be stupid. Don't be stupid. I'm not saying that at all. That's a really dangerous way of thinking. Don't, that's like psychotic stuff, right? That's like, um, that's like uh, psychosis, I think. If you, if you start to walk around the world and think everybody's an actor and nothing's real, you know? Um, no, 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 no. That's what I'm talking about. Talking about the symbolism of what they were showing us, because they always these these black magic artists, these black magic spellcasters, which are what movies are. They're casting spells and spells and spells. Uh, you know, the, they they speak through symbolism. And they always have and they always will. And it's decoding that symbolism that helps us, as they say, uncover the matrix or open up whatever this thing is, this digital thing they've built around us. This all digital thing they've built around us that you know digital controls everything now. And they're trying to kill the physical world. Trees are dying everywhere. I tell you, I don't know if you've noticed this, but where are all the animals? Where are all the birds? I live in a rural area. I remember about a year, year but almost exactly a year ago, it was right before coronavirus last year was announced. It was like in February. And I was in, I was in Milwaukee. Matter of fact, I got to go to uh, the, the last sporting event I'll ever be to was what, like one week before coronavirus. And of course, we didn't know. But I, I went with my girlfriend at the time to a Milwaukee Bucks game. Uh, you know, Bucks were like the best team in the league last year. And they, so we went to a Bucks game and, and they won by literally like 55 points. It was insane. And, and she, he, she was kind of a fan of Giannis, Giannis Antetokounmpo, I think you said. Giannis Antetokounmpo. He's Greek, the Greek freak. Kind of forgot about him. I liked Giannis too. Man, that guy was lightning. That guy, whoo. He crossed the entire NBA court in like four steps. He's like seven foot tall and he's more athletic than a six foot one point guard, you know. Uh, he's crazy, like a freak show, that guy. Just Greek, the Greek freak, they call him. And he is, he's a freak. So we got to go see him live and all of a sudden my girlfriend's like, yeah, I like that guy. I like him, you know. I'm like, yeah, he's, he's the best player in the world, for real, you know. And so we saw that, uh and I remember the next day we went to, to some, some uh, state park or, or national park or something. And we went for a long hike, long hike in the middle of nowhere. You know, it was somewhere between uh, Kettle Moraine or something between, uh, between Milwaukee and, and Madison. It was real remote. Kettle Moraine, I think it was called. And went on, you know, four or five mile hike way out in the woods. It was the winter, snow, but it was a nice day. And we're in the middle of nowhere. There's no people around, nothing. Never saw an animal. Never saw, never saw a bird. Not one. Not one. Not a single bird, not a single tweet, 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 you know, no squirrels, no rabbits, no deer. I'm like, it was about, I was about halfway into the hike, you know, and I was like, you know, call her name. I'm like, have you seen any animals or birds or anything? She's like, no, I haven't, you know, and then I was just noticing like, yeah, it's winter and, and trees look dead in winter, but 
uh, because, you know, in, in, in Wisconsin, you know, they, they shed their leaves in the winter, obviously, and stuff. But 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 pi- uh, pine trees don't. Pine trees don't. There's all these dead pine trees. Like, all these trees are just dead. It's the middle of this, this, this national forest or state forest, whatever it was. All the trees are dead. These trees are just dead everywhere. And, 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 and so, and another thing, I tell you, man, this, this earth, they're killing it. 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 We loved to kayak. We kayaked all the time, you know. All the time, all summer long, ever since we got kayaks, like five, six years ago, uh, you know, big rivers, little rivers, every river, you know, anywhere we can find. And so we go up and down little rivers and stuff too. And man, I used to do that when I was a kid and, and we'd take inner tube trips and stuff like that. And there were, once in a while you'd see a tree down, you know, blocking a little bit of the river and stuff anymore. It's like, it's every corner. It's just trees down everywhere in the river, laying in the river, just trees falling in. I'm like, man, this, I used to say, man, this earth's getting old. This earth's getting old. But but really, it's just, I think it's they're destroying it. Barium, strontium, aluminum coming from the sky for decades now, all the time. Like, that's not killing the trees, but where's the wildlife? It's scary. When's the last time you saw a bumblebee? It's scary. Like, I remember last summer, I only saw one or two. <laughs> so they're destroying it because they want it dead because it's Yahweh's creation. and they And they want it. They want to transcend everything to digital, a subhuman, subspecies concoction of junk, of a bunch of ones, of worthless ones. Zeros are always irrelevant. Zeros just break up the ones. Zeros always irrelevant. It's a series of worthless ones. <laughs> and we're like, yay, digital, yay, digital. It makes life so much better. No, it doesn't. It makes it miserable. And it's put us in this ridiculous matrix that we don't even understand that we're in, that we're trying to break out of. Just like in the Truman Show, and just like in Bandersnatch, somehow, some way. So, if you have thoughts on these things, I'd be really interested to know. I'm, my mind is wide open to, to your thoughts and your ideas. You know, I, I, I guess it's something I really haven't prayed specifically about. It's not like something that's a forefront of my mind, but, but I know for years and years I've known this, 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 con- this concept, the Truman Show concept, is so important. I know they used to make videos on it on YouTube. A lot of people did years ago. I don't really remember what they talked about in those. I just remember it was a thing, you know. Like they'd always say, well, the Truman Show, you know, shows what our lives really are. But I never really understood anything beyond that. Um, so anyway, um, head on over to avoidthemark.com slash podcast. Again, it's avoidthemark.com slash podcast. All of these podcasts are on there. Uh, like I said in today's earlier video, I, the ones I'm doing today, which are 32 33, and now this will be 34. Uh, those probably won't be on avoidthemark.com slash podcast until tomorrow morning. So for now, you can listen to them on YouTube. Um, but I'll always have them on there. And I've, I've been putting out two, three, sometimes four podcasts a day with really relevant information that, that my creator is really sharing with me and wanting me to share with you. So I'm, ho- I'm hoping you're getting some uh, some use out of it, right? Uh, and then head over to Revelation Free Radio. It's my live radio station. It streams 24-7, 365. The link is in the description and all over my website on avoidthemark.com. God bless you this afternoon. I may have one more video for you yet uh, later this afternoon or early evening. We'll see how that goes. Uh, if not, have a good rest of your day, and we will speak soon. Peace.